Okay, hi everyone. We're going to do a very quick video um, now, just to exp an experiment with watercolors, basically. So I'm just going to sketch, sketching very quickly. Um, if, just to, any sort of well, I've got I've actually got a photograph next to me here of uh, Dunstanborough Castle up in Northumberland. It's a very, very loose sketch. This because again, I just really want to concentrate on the watercolors and I want to see what they can do. So um, I'm just sketching a very loose shape of the castle. We've got some rocks down the bottom there. I'm not worrying too much, just keep it nice and loose. We've got the the mound there that's on and it runs down towards the sea here. Keep it nice and loose as I say. Um it doesn't really matter. Just you just put a little tiny bit of structure and keep it nice and uh, uh relaxed. We're not putting too much um, effort into that bit. We're just gonna put a little bit of sky, there's a bit of cloud in there as well over the back. We've got a couple of little windows which I'll just make a reference to they're probably a little bit small enough, but it doesn't honestly it doesn't matter because I just want to you know, just remind you I just want to see what the uh, the watercolours can do. Um, a few rocks down here. You can see that. Just a very light sketch. I've got a few people in there as well. Just, just making a reference to it. I'm really not that fussed about that bit. No details. I've got some a lot of grass up in here, so I'll just make a reference to that. And again, when I put the uh, the watercolors on, it doesn't really matter. This foreground in here, right at the bottom, there's some longer grass in there on my photograph that I can see. So that's the picture there. Just as you can see, it's not a great picture, but it's just a quick snapshot. Just got a reference of, of Dunsinborough. Um, and I've got that in there. I'm happy with that at the minute. And again, I've got a quite a large brush here because it is experimental. What we're going to do is we're going to put a sky in first. We've got a nice bit of a, there is light blue in the picture, which I can see some a little bit of purple in there as well. It's quite a, a cool day when I took this photograph. Yeah, so I just wash a very light, very light wash of blue on there. Keep it nice and loose with a big fat brush. Okay, like that. And then I'll get a little bit of I need a bit a little bit of ready purple, so I'll just get a little bit of the magenta there. A little bit of blue off the palette and just to wash that in the clouds as well. It's coming up quite dark. Oh well, it's an experiment, it doesn't matter, I don't care. That'll blend together. That's absolutely fine. So, okay, so we're just washing it again. The water I'm using here, I've got a little pot of little pot of water there. Filthy, doesn't matter, it's an experiment. I would normally I would normally wash that, but I've just been I've been messing around tonight with my watercolour, so I'm just not gonna change that at the minute. So I'll just leave that to just blend in there a little bit. Again, nice and loose. Everything's wet and wet. Here today, I've left the edge of the castle um, there. You'll see when I put some paint on there in a minute how that will that will go quite dark, but it will blend in. You're just going to kind of relax using watercolors; they will blend together. Sometimes, if you don't want that to happen, you're going to have to let the edges dry off. So you do one one part of your picture, and then go to another area while that dries off. If, unless you come to it, in fact, I'll do it now just to show you. I want a nice sort of dark brown in for that castle. I'll put a little bit of blue in as well just to cool things down because if you put if you keep things nice and cool the colours cooler the further they are it takes the it takes the eye into the picture you want your warmer colours down at the bottom near the foreground of the picture so it's nearer to you and um, so again I'm saying I'll just put a little bit of dark brown a little bit of blue for the castle in the background there and again you'll see here when I put this on at the minute that's you got a nice clean edge on that but as soon as it hits the other water, the other water color, you can see, I don't know if you can see that at the edge, probably not actually. Just move that in a little bit. God, the reflection is terrible. Like, you see how much water's on there. You see how the edge is starting to bleed a little bit? That's fine. It doesn't matter. It's an experiment. We're just seeing what the paint can do. Okay, so we'll just be careful to paint those edges in. I put those, drew those windows in there before. I'll very carefully paint some edges in for the windows. What I would probably normally do with the watercolor is... See on the photograph, the rocks coming down, and then you've got a nice big shadow on that. There's a lot of stonework in here, very similar to the Dunsmore Castle, the back, the back of Dunsmore Castle here. It almost looks like it's merging it with the rock that it's built on, which is it looks it's fantastic if you go and see it. Um, but again, I'm just putting some little references, rock references, which I can see in there. There's a lot of green in the photograph as well, so I'll come back. I'm going to get a little bit of green now with a little bit of yellow, I think. The grass is sort of quite dried out. It's a, this is sort of autumn time. That's far too green at the minute, but again, it's an experiment. It doesn't matter. We're just playing with, play with colours. I'm not looking. I've got the photograph. I don't need another photograph. What I want is a, an impression of the what I'm looking at. Okay, that's what we're aiming for. It is a painting. It's meant to be something enjoyable and fun to look at. Okay, we're not looking for a photographic representation. So, again, just washing a few sort of loose colours in there. I've got a bit more green in here. I've got a little bit of brown as well. This is the Northumberland countryside. You know, you've got some real sort of earthy colours in there. Um, a lot of moorland. Um, there you are, just washing those in, that's okay. And in here, you've got a really dark area, so I want to get 
nice dark brown. Mix it with some of the greens already in the palette. Oh, I'm going to be really bold here. And even if I make a complete mess, it doesn't matter. This is an experiment tonight. Okay, don't be too precious with your work. Start off nice and loose with watercolours. You can always add details in later on if you want to. Okay, just in certain areas where anything's dried off, you can sort of paint in some details as well, which is great. Always great fun. Right, in the fore right in the foreground, you've got a really bright green. It's a lovely sunny day. We've got some lovely bright greens in there, so I'm just gonna wash in very loosely some bright greens in. You've got all the pebbles and stones down at the beach, down in this area here, which I'm just gonna leave for now, I think. I'm just gonna maybe touch that in a minute. I'll think have a think about that one later on. Again, you've got some I'll use a bit of umber in there. Which is like I'm just really mixing them too well on that one. I'm not going to force it, it's fine, I'll just leave it on. Do you see where I just put that stroke in there? Oh dear, it does matter, I'll leave it and I think, oh, maybe I can put a little extra tree in there or something later on. There's a nice deep shadow in this area, which I should probably leave till later, but because it is, I want to do this in a nice short video. Shadows, never ever use black on my pictures. Um, black tends to be my art teacher at school telling me that I... Black hair just kills your, your pictures, so don't use black where you, unless you really uh, need to put in some black details. I mean, I tend not to use black, especially in watercolours. Okay, so I'm just going to put a really nice uh, dark brown with a bit of dark blue and just put in a shadow in there. I may as well just put it in now, see what happens. It might look a complete tip, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying things out. Okay, and this comes right into here on this edge of this the castle here. And I'll just stop there, that bit there. A little bit of detail. I've sort of faffing with details in a minute. I shouldn't really be doing, but um, because the paper's drying quite quick, I sort of want to get it and start putting some details in here. But I'll leave it for now. You can see where this is running together. Um, there's a bit more shadow now. I might actually use some of this while that's still wet. Just to darken that area in as well. It's starting to look a bit like a landscape now. This looks really heavy at the minute, but what I'll do is I'll pull some of this in a second. I'll use a smaller brush. And I'll make some of these areas. I'll just take some of this dark in here and mix it in at the edge of the castle, and that hopefully will pull everything together a little bit. Okay, so I'll just get my smaller brush, put the big one down for a moment, get the small brush. And if you use a dry brush with watercolour, it almost can look and work, sorry, it almost can work like a sponge. So you actually lift areas. If you get dry your brush off, you can lift areas of your uh, the wet paint out with a dry brush. You get some nice effect with that as well. I'll just show you now if you don't need to see it in detail. I'll just wash my brush and clean it, dry it, and you can sort of lift out. I don't know if you can see that. You can lift out areas. That's full now. The brush is saturated. So again, I'll just dry it off. Just use my fingers. You can use a bit of tissue or a paper towel or something. But again, you can just lift out areas that you're not very happy with. So if you have a mistake, if you make a mistake, that's fine. Call it a happy accident. If you really don't like it, you can actually raise part of your areas if it's still a bit wet. You can add in water to it, and then you can lift, dry your brush, and then lift areas out and clean it all up like that if you want to. But ultimately, with watercolour, you're going to have to accept that there will be mistakes with it because it wants to do its own thing. But especially when you use wet on wet, you can't really control it. You can see just I'm pulling up some areas here. I'm not even looking at the photograph now. I'm just playing around with the, the paint, which is great fun. Um. You can see where that's sort of bleeding. This bit's dry in here, and it's not bleeding, but these bits at the top, I don't know if you can see that, just move in a bit closer. Oh, get my shadow out of the way. Those bits at the top there, they're starting to blend and merge, and that's fine, it looks, almost looks like a plant. You see where all these, these blobby bits are going on here? I love that, the way that blends in like that, but this bit looks far too dark and heavy. Once I get these other colours and it won't, but I'm still probably going to lift a bit of this out anyway, so I might just do that now, before I end the video. All right, so try and incorporate different aspects. So you've got nice light wash sky. I put it in a, the sort of castle in there as well. Don't have it too dark because you want if darker is the more it's going to come out at you. Um, and then the, your your foreground at the bottom here that should be the sort of darker area with the more detail in. Try and keep the rest of it getting gradually looser and lighter if you can. That's, as I say, that's far too heavy. So what I'll do, I'll get my big brush again. I'm going to clean it. With my pot of water dry that off and I'll just lift some of these darker patches out and ultimately if you make a mistake so what it doesn't matter you're trying things out you might find that actually if you leave it and let it dry you come back to you and think hmm it's not too bad stick a frame on it give it to somebody tell them it's an abstract watercolour it's an impression okay it's an original work of art at the end of the day oh dear I've got some splashes never mind I'll put some more on as well look I'm going a bit crazy now 
right? It really doesn't matter. To have some fun with it, see what it can do. That's the only way you're going to learn how to use them. It's a very subtle art. Again, this is a bit of a messy piece of work, but I kind of like it in a funny sort of way. And I think if I left that and came back to it and started putting some more details in, you can start. You can see there's another piece that was quite experimental. I did a little while ago there. That's a very local scene, St Mary's Lighthouse. Um, that was very experimental. And I came, I sort of left it. I had an idea where everything was going to go. I pencil sketched it in, but again, I just built up these different areas, different washes of colour. Really played around with it. I quite enjoyed doing that, it was good fun. But I love putting the details in as well later on. That can all come in, but it's just knowing when to stop and not working into it too much, I think, with watercolour. That's me personally, anyway. Okay, have a go yourself, enjoy. <laughs>